So you own a property and you want to turn it into a rental, but you're not sure if you should do a traditional long-term rental or if you should do an Airbnb or a short-term rental. Well, by the end of this video, you'll know precisely which strategy will make you more money and it starts right now. So this question came up last week with a friend slash mentee of mine. He is moving out of his first house hack, which I got him into, by the way, so pumped for him. He has like 50 grand in equity, it's awesome. And he's watched me convert some of my holdings into furnished rental and doing the Airbnb thing. And since he's ready to move from the house hack to his next house hack, he wants to know which strategy is best for his particular property. So today I'm gonna to share with you exactly what I shared with him. Here's where you are. You've decided to make your home a rental. Let's get some clarity on what exactly is a traditional rental and what exactly is an Airbnb and which one might be better. So if you've missed like the last decade, if you had your head in the sand, you might not know what Airbnb is. However, if you've been paying attention, Airbnb is like this multi-billion dollar company that's essentially, it serves as an online marketplace and connects people who wanna rent out their home or a room or a particular space that they own with people who are looking for accommodations typically to vacate to that particular location. Airbnb has been so ridiculously successful, they've actually become synonymous with the short-term rental industry. It's a generic term for the entire industry. Hey, do you wanna get an Airbnb? Which means, do you wanna get a short-term? It's like uh, Xerox in the 90s and 2000s. Everybody's like, hey, could you Xerox this for me? Xerox was just a brand brand, but it encompassed the entire industry. That's what Airbnb is. They've dominated the short-term rental space. So with regard to Airbnb, there are essentially three primary factors to consider so that you can ultimately know whether you should Airbnb or short-term rental your property or do more of a long-term six-month or 12-month lease for your property that you're wanting to convert to a rental. So the first thing to understand is pricing. And this is where the biggest distinctions, in my opinion, exist. When you do a traditional rental property, the market essentially dictates almost exactly what you can rent it for. If there's a, an apartment up the street that's very similar to yours and they get X amount of a month, you're probably gonna get X amount a month. You typically sign a long-term lease and you can't change the pricing until the lease term is up. That obviously means you receive the same amount of rental income, sure and steady as the North Star, every month, month after month. Which by the way, as an investor, can be really smart. A lot of people have made a lot of money using that strategy. It's a known quantity and it's a great approach to wealth. Airbnb, however, conversely does not necessarily play by those same rules. So a short-term rental actually allows you to be extremely flexible with your pricing. It's called seasonality. Hosts can use different pricing strategies and adjust their pricing with every single stay should they so choose. So for instance, if you're in the busy season, you could push rents up. If you're in the low season or the less busy season, you could bring prices back down. There's even dynamic pricing software tools that will automate the pricing seasonality for you. There there's Wheelhouse, there's Price Labs, which is what we use, there's OutSwitch, there's AirDNA, and probably a host of others. But it's a very effective tool in order to maximize the income that you can get because demand changes throughout the season. So bottom line, dynamic pricing is a clear advantage you have with an SDR versus a long-term or traditional rental. Okay, number two, gauge demand. And this one is really important. This probably should have been number one, but there's really no point at all to having dynamic pricing or flexibility in pricing if no one wants to stay at your freaking STR, right? So you have to be able to conduct some upfront research to know if your rental property has the proper demand to warrant becoming an STR. The best place to start is airdna.co. That's square one where we pull all of our comparable sales data. You'll have to set up an account and you can actually set up a free account. The tool you're gonna be looking to use is called their Rentalizer tool. And essentially you can put in your address, you can put in bedrooms, bathrooms, square foot and make some updates to the property just in case the information that it pulls, which typically comes from the tax record, is isn't accurate, but you can modify the information inside AirDNA. What you're trying to establish is your average daily rate, your ADR that you can expect for that property. And also in conjunction with your ADR, you'll want to establish what your occupancy rate will be. And that's a percentage of days throughout the year that they anticipate that your property would be occupied throughout the year. So if you know how much on average you could get paid and how many days per year it's gonna stay rented, you can start to put together an analysis of the potential income for your property. So for us in Hampton Roads, in our market, we have a pretty reasonable demand for STRs around here. It's not off the chain. It's not like we're Myrtle Beach or the Eastern Shore or South Florida or even the Outer Banks, but we do have a lot of water around here and a lot of local beaches and great tourist attractions like Colonial Williamsburg and a host of museums ranging from like, you know, the War for Independence to like World War II, just the kind of cool stuff that people will travel to. And so typically we can see, depending on where you're at, occupancy rates from like 50 50 
to 70%. If you're at the beach where there is more tourist spots and more sort of a destination location type thing going on, you can get as high as 70 or 80% by the beach. But you need to be able to establish a baseline for what your occupancy and your daily rate's gonna be so that you know what to establish as a baseline for potential rental income. And that's all going to be in how you gauge demand. So number three, while you're gauging demand and income, you also need to consider your expenses. And this is also a big distinction between long-term versus SDR. The expenses of an SDR are very different and they're a lot more. Typically, when you rent out a property, you as the landlord, like worst case scenario on a long-term lease, you might have to cover things like utilities, like water and electricity. But generally, everything else is covered by the tenant. Well, with SDRs, you're gonna be doing things like regular maintenance. You're responsible for light bulbs. You're responsible for the internet. You're gonna be paying things like cleaning. Now, on the, on the upside, cleaning is a, an expense that you can actually pass along to your guests. So that's something you can kind of like plus and minus out. But you'll also need to determine if you're gonna be self-managing or not. Because if you aren't managing, expect to pay somewhere in the 20 to 25% of your gross right off the top in order to have someone manage the property for you. If you're feeling up to it and you have the schedule flexibility, I strongly recommend you consider self-managing because you'll learn a lot and you'll save a lot of money. And especially in your first couple of deals, that 20 to 25% may represent a significant, if not all of your profit on the first couple of deals. So also another cost that people forget to quantify is furnishings. And that's an upfront cost. You're gonna have to put in TVs. You're gonna have to buy couches. You're gonna have to buy beds. You're gonna have to buy linens. You're gonna have to buy dishes and utensils and seasonings for people that wanna cook. So anticipate probably somewhere in that five to 10% per square foot in terms of upfront furnishing costs. And don't get cheap on this. Trust me, it's easy to get chintzy on your furnishings because you think you're gonna save a buck, but it's gonna cost you way more in the long run because if you put in really nice furnishings and your design work is like on point, your pictures and your marketing are gonna come out better and people are going to book your place and they'll be willing to pay more because your place looks way better than the competition. So don't chintz out on furnishing. So there's the three things. Bottom line, there are pros and cons for each. For Airbnb, the pros, there's more potential to maximize your income. There's flexibility in terms of pricing. You don't have to deal with long-term lease agreements. And if you don't like the people that go into your property, you just gotta wait them out for like a week or so and then they'll be gone. The disadvantages, you're gonna run into some irregular income. There's seasonality, so sometimes income is gonna be great. Sometimes it might not be so great. So you have to be very savvy in how you set aside your, your money and hold some back for expenses and capital expenditures and that sort of thing to cover expenses throughout the year. Also, as for long-term rentals, well, you've got regular dependable income and you have very low turnover. You can also own long-term rentals in a more passive manner. So just assume there's gonna be less work with a long-term rental than there is with a short-term rental. And if you have a good property manager, there's gonna be a lot less headache. So even with a property manager on the short-term rental side, you're still gonna be engaging with them regularly because you are really in the hospitality business, not just the real estate business. So how can you determine which one is right for you? In my opinion, it boils down to the demand in your market and what your personal goals are. If you have reasonable demand, then no doubt there is bigger financial upside with an STR. It just boils down to how much you personally want to be involved in the activity of your portfolio. For me personally, I can only speak from my personal experience, I love it. While it does get stressful occasionally to be so engaged with so many properties, for me, the action is the juice. Well, you know, for me, the action is the juice. But what about you? Do you feel up to the challenge of converting your property to a short-term rental? Or would you rather just turn it over to a property manager, get somebody on a long-term lease and forget about it? Either strategy can work. It just depends on what your goals are. So if you have specific questions, if you have anything you'd like me to help you answer, please comment below and I'll be sure to get back with you. And remember, success is inevitable so long as you continue putting one foot in front of the other. You'll eventually get there. Until next time, I'm Jonathan Beasley signing off.